Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. Today we're taking a look at Psych Awakening, the greatest of goods, the Tau slash guard slash Gene Stealer cult update for Warhammer 40,000. Now, normally I would do this all in one shot. <laughs> I do a single video and I just go through this whole book, but I can't bring myself to do it this time because... Man, there's a lot, a lot of rules in this book, and to go through it all, like, again, it, it would take it'd be a very long video. Uh, and so I'm going to break this into three videos, uh, one on each section, and you can see here, it's only 26 pages of, sorry, 20 pages of background, uh, six pages of missions for the Wars in the Fifth Sphere, and then we're looking at another 53 pages of rules <laughs> for the Tau Empire, the Astro Militarum, the Ordo Tempestus, which is basically the, um, a, like it's a separate update for the military, or the, uh, the Tempestus Science. And then the cult, the Gene Stealer cult, not the not the band from the, the 70s and 80s. Um, and yeah, so TLDR, the fifth wave expansion, has begun in earnest. It's basically the new big push by the Tau. And the sort of MacGuffin for this book is all around that. And these these are the, the armies in the battle zone. The cults, the Militarum, the Ordo Tempestus, uh, and of course, the greatest of good, the Tau Empire. Uh, they also do a little bit of backgrounding on how a lot of these Tau characters are alive. Because you know about the 40k background, the Tau aren't supposed to live that long. Um, and even even for all the characters from the, the Tau Empire Codex to be alive, like for Anva and Shadow Sun and Oshova and like all these characters to be alive, like in the time it takes for like the, the, the Cicatrix Maledictum, Maledictum to, to happen and Cole to make the Space Marines, they should all be dead. Like everyone should be dead. <laughs> so the new MacGuffin is that they put everyone in cryo. They, if you really need somebody, you, you full on Bjorn the Phil hand him, stick him in cryo sleep, and then you thaw him out when you need him, and they go and they fight. So Shadowson's been in cryo for a while, uh, and she's out to lead the fifth sphere. So these characters can they they get it, Avengers Endgame, and uh, and some technology solves everything. Um, so you get some cool like sort of details in some certain places uh, in the the expansions, so like the Chalnath Expanse. Um, some sort of uh, major actions uh, that happen as well. And then you get, of course, some missions to reflect those actions. Uh, and, and of course, as the as the expansion starts to go well, the Gene Stewart boys show up and start murdering everybody. <laughs> and then again, my favorite section in all of these, always, um, is the, the, the intercepted box transmission. Of all the things in these Psychic Awakening books, I like this part the best. I'll be honest, I, the rules of background, it's all cool, but like, yeah, this is my favorite part. I like this part here, um, where it's just like intercepted by Kruar, uh in the subsector of Strazium. It's just kill me, and burn, kill me, and burn, kill me, and burn, and that means that uh, that that Karn the Betrayer, I guess, has showed up there at some point. Um, the mechanical gods stride with each mighty step they tread on the one who trod on us. Join us in our glorious endeavor. May vengeance be ours. May our prosters be toppled. I don't know what the mechanical gods stride means. I I, I mean, I guess maybe like a gene star cult infected a. Uh, some kind of Mechanicum Night World, maybe, or Forge World? I, I don't know. It's, it's just fun. <laughs> the Forearmed Emperor is the greater good. Behold the similarities. Hear what they both wish for their people. Peace and unity in a new age, a time of joy and prosperity, free from oppression. We all have purpose in place. Uh, it's just, it's, they're great. I love all of it. And we got our missions. You can see here the cool new Shadow Sun mini. Uh, and all the theaters of war, like the caverns. You can fight in giant caverns where everyone lives underground. Uh, and then it just jumps right into the Tau. So this this segment is going to be on the Tau. If you want to click up in the, the cards up here, you'll be able to check out the sections on the um, the Tempest of Scions, the Guard, and the uh, the later one, um, the Gene Stealer Cults. So we're just going to jump right into the Tau, talk about what we got. Well, what do we get? They put the name generator in the front this time. There's a change. Uh, I don't know why, but it's cool. Uh, and it gives you your, your cast names on top of being um, like actually named, because it goes cast, rank, sept, and then your actual individual name generator. So let's say I was a, from the Earth, I was an engineer or a scientist. I'd be Fio, and I was like a noble, Fio L, uh, and then I'm from Sept Furios, Fio L, Furios, and then I could be Tojo. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the name generators, they make me laugh. Uh, uh, what else we get in here? We get some Commander Shadow Sun, the new rules, the new, new uh, War Scroll Battalion, new Sept Tenants. So basically, this is your version of making your own Guard Battalion or your own. Space Marine chapter or whatever, you get to pick some tenets and combine them together to make your own sept if you didn't want to use one of the septs from the codex. Prototype weapon systems, they're interesting. They replace your relic, but they can apply to whole units. So like you could give like an entire unit of battle suits these prototypes. And one of them is pretty great. 
Um, stratagems that everybody can use, and then the eight, which is kind of an army by itself. It's like an attachment of, I think it's a Lords of War choice, and then it's just it's all eight of Oshova and his boys going out, go eight samuraiing. Why didn't you just make it the seven? Like, just do it. If you're gonna do a trope, just do the trope all the way. Make it the seven, uh, and then Farsight Enclaves. The rules for that too. Commander Shao Sun, she's pretty great. I'm sure everyone's already seen her War Scroll. Um, or War Scroll. This is wrong game. Data slate? Data scroll? Scroll scroll data? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Her her rules. Um, but she's pretty bald. She's you know, she's got she's basically like a gunfighter. She's got a pretty good movement of eight. She's got some drones to come with her. Of course it's on two, strength four, toughness four, five wounds, four attacks, leadership nine, three plus save. Um, she's always hard to hit because she's wearing her XV whatever. Her XV good suit, <laughs> XV25, is it 25? I can't remember, I, there's too, much, too, many, too many suit numbers now. Yeah, XV25 stealth battle suit. I'm um, oh, sorry, to, uh, to 25 stealth battle suits can take wounds for her. Uh, she's wearing XV22 stalker battle suit, that's right. It gives her a 5 up interval. Um, and yeah, so stealth suits can take wounds for her on 2+, plus, but they take a mortal wound. She's a supreme commander. Um, it doesn't prevent you from having a different sub tenant, so she can just join any army. Basically, it's the it's it's a nice. Actually, I do like that they put that in there because it means that you can use this miniature in any Tau sept, and you have a reason to buy it. It's not like one of these these special characters that's like tied to a certain chapter or a certain guard regiment or whatever. She's just she's in charge of everybody, so you can go ahead and buy this model. Uh, she can infiltrate, of course. She's got the further greater good master war rules. Uh, she's got the genius of Kion. Once per battle, this model can declare a Kion, even if Kion or Mont Kyle has already been declared. Uh, so like your your they're almost like your your doctrines I'm sure for top players and for those who aren't top players that makes a, a good kind of um, comparison uh, but you can't declare Monkon Kion in the same turn so she has a do over basically for doing Kion twice and then she's a command link drone at the start of your shooting phase of a friendly command link drone model is within three of this model select one friendly Tau Empire unit within twelve of this model till the end of the phase when resolving an attack made by a model in the Tau Empire unit you can reroll hit rolls of one so she just drops a reroll of one on somebody uh, drone support. This model, when this model is set up, its drones can be in coherency with it, and then from that point on, they're a separate unit. Camouflage fields, minus one hit, and of course, final pinball. She got the savior protocols, all the usual good stuff that Tau commanders have. And she is. Oh, they put the point values in the front? They usually. No, they did, they did later on in some of these, they put point values in the front, but she's. I'm just going to go look right now. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The 8 is 1120. She is. Without point values? Ha 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 ha, what? Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> she's 9 power, which means she's roughly 180 points. Uh, did I just miss this? I don't think I did. Okay. <laughs> I, if it comes up later on, I'll, I'll mention it. Uh, sap tenants. So you choose two of these, and you combine them, um, and that's your custom sap. Give it a cool name. It replaces the sap tag, the you know, empty sap tag, and all your tie units. Uh, and you can mix and match. So turbo jets, you can add one to advanced rolls for jetpack units, and then add two to the move characters for jetpack units. So that's pretty cool. So all your, you know, crisis, anything with jetpack as a, as a tag. Uh, dedication to the cause, just plus one leadership for every model in your army. Soldiers in arms, increase your further greater grade ability to nine inches for units with this tenant. Stabilization systems, uh, when you're resolving attack me with a ranged weapon with this battle suit model, um, with this tenant, that model does not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. It's pretty useful. I mean, I, 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 but honestly, most suit weapons though, like, most of your little suit weapons are probably going to be rapid fire and assault. I can't really think of a lot that are heavy. Um, the big guys obviously have a lot of heavy weapons, though. Hardened Warheads, when resolving an attack with a high yield missile pod, missile pod, seco missile, or smart missile system by a model in this tenant, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that weapon by one for that attack. Uh, sophisticated Command Net, uh, you would feel like all of the Tau Command Nets would be sophisticated. When resolving an attack made by a vehicle model for this tenant uh, against a unit that has one or more marker light counters, real wound rolls a one. So it increases your marker light, uh, light value basically for that um, for everybody in the army. Uh, hybridized weaponry, add four to the range characteristic of assault and grenade weapons. Uh, models this tenant are equipped with. This is not applied to prototype weapon systems. Gifted pilots, in your movement phase, a vehicle or monster model with this tenant does not move uh, or moves less than half its move characteristic until the end of the turn. When resolving an attack made with a range weapon by that model, real wound rolls a one. That's pretty cool. I mean, I think it's a vehicle or monster. I don't think your suits are, though. So if you're skewing into vehicles or the big guys, like the something wave, I don't remember. <laughs> I honestly, I, I like I like blanked out of my mind. <laughs> they are they are the thing that was added to 40K. Um, 
Advanced power cells, tactical drones, models of the tenant have a move characteristic of 10. Uh, maneuvering thrusters of battlesuit, this tenant can advance when it falls back. Uh, upgunned burst cannons uh, with this tenant are equipped with have an arm penetration characteristic of 1. I honestly, I mean, that's it. There's only 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 of them. The marine ones are so much better. <laughs> like, they're just not, uh, I don't know. They, they're okay. I mean, the Gifted Palace is pretty cool if you're going to skew into vehicles. Everything else is just kind of okay. I guess Soldiers and Arms is pretty good. Just to increase the range of the further greater good stuff. But for the rest of it, it's kind of just meh. Kind of okay. You'd have to skew into something very specific to make uh, to make value come out of it. Prototype weapon systems. Okay, so like I said earlier, you give up a relic, a uh, unit can be given a prototype weapon system. They have to have whatever the right thing is, right? The right tag, so battle suits, uh, ghost kills, hammerheads, ghost kills. And they, then they get this upgrade. And every model in the unit does. So it's a reason to take units of more than one thing, um, especially for like suits. So reactive cannon measures, battle suit model with a frag, uh, air bursting frag projector only. Uh, range weapons with an arm penetration characteristic of minus one or minus two is treated having zero when resolving attack against a model with this weapon system. That's pretty cool. So when you shoot them, it, it's, it's counter measures actually shoot down the, the projectiles coming at you. A fusion obliterator uh, for a ghost kill replaces their fusion collider with a 24 inch range, heavy three, strength nine, minus four, D6 damage gun. Uh, does uh, two pick the highest at half range. An advanced EM scrambler, ghost kills again, enemy cannot be set up within 12, gives you that, that space marine vanguard ability basically to keep you from destroying within 12. A high capacitance railgun for the hammerheads, uh, gets a solid shot at 60, heavy 2, 10, minus 4, D6, or submunitions at 60 inch range, heavy 43, 6, minus 1, 1 damage. Abilities when resolving an attack with a solid shot profile, a 6 plus wound roll is D3 mortal wounds in addition to the other damage. So it gives you a, gives you a super big damage. A Gatling Burst Cannon for commanders, XV8 crisis suits, XV8 crisis bodyguards, or ghost kills. They can upgun their Gat to Gatling Burst Cannon, so the whole unit would get this. Um, assault 4, 18 inch range, Assault 4, Strength 5, AP dash, 1 damage, and uh, hits of 6 score additional hit, but only unmodified ones. Network marker lights, Pathfinders only. Uh, it replaces all your marker lights, and you get 36 inch range assault one. So they stop being heavy. That's pretty cool. Annihilation warheads for a storm surge. That's the name I was looking for. I'm resolving an attack maybe with a destroyer missile by this model. Uh, if it scores a hit, do not roll to determine the number of wounds. It's just automatically does a flat through mortal wounds. Accelerated photon grenades. Uh, you get. 12 inch range, grenade D6. When a weapon, uh, this weapon can only target infantry units when resolving attack with this weapon. No wound rolls made. Uh, when resolving attack made the weapon by, by a model from a shock unit, so they become shocked until they start your next turn. Uh, they're minus one to hit. In addition, shock units cannot advance and charge rolls are halved. Crosslinked stabilizer jets for XV8s, commanders, crisis battle suits, uh, or XV8 crisis body, bah, crisis bodyguards. This one. Seems real worth it if you're gonna skew into those things. Only if you take them as a unit though. So for a commander, this is probably not the best. Um, I mean, it might be. It's a pretty good like relic replacement for a commander, but if you take a unit or something with like this, it would get like infinitely better. Resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model in this unit, reroll hit rolls of one, and reroll wound rolls of one. So you just get to reroll ones for everything, for that whole unit, for a relic. Oh, well, pretty good. Um, <laughs> I'm just like, I don't, I don't know how any of these others compete with that one, because it just gets infinitely better the bigger the unit is. Uh, a Magna Rail Rifle for broadsides. It's 60 inch range, heavy 2, 9 minus 4, D6. And on a 6 plus wound roll, I get a mortal wound in addition to your normal damage. Uh, resolving attack maybe this weapon, a damage roll of two, 1 or 2 counts as a 3. Amplified Ion Accelerator. It's for Riptads only. Uh, it's standard is 72 inch range, heavy 6, strength 8, minus 4, 3 damage. And it's overcharges, heavy 6, mi 9 minus 4, 3 plus D3 damage. For each hit of one uh, for attacks made with this weapon's overcharge profile, you get a mortal wound after you shoot. And then high power incinerators for any battle suit. Um, you can replace your flamers with these. It's 8 inch range, assault D6, strength 4, and 1 damage when resolving just automatically hits. Um, if you're within half range, add 1 to its strength. So at 4 inches, it's strength 5. And we're into some stratagems. So you can get some uh, new stratagems to add into your codex, basically. So just like all the other armies that got new stratagems, these are just in addition to your normal ones. So you get some sweet sworn bodyguards for one CP. Use a stratagem in the fight phase. When a uh, XV8 crisis bodyguards unit from your army chosen to fight until the end of that phase. 
When resolving an attack, maybe the melee weapon by a model in that unit uh, will friendly models within three. You can reroll hit rolls and you can reroll the wound roll. So that's pretty cool. Uh, aerial targeting. I mean, it would be good if you were good in melee. <laughs> I mean, you're okay in melee. It's, I don't know. <laughs> they don't even have swords. Um, one CP for aerial targeting uses uh, strategy meter shooting phase, select an enemy unit until the end of that phase. Resolve attack me with a range weapon by a model in your army against that unit. Treat that unit as having one more marker light counter than normal for the attack. So you can basically add a marker light to the total. Two CPs for deadly aim. Uh, it works on sniper drone teams in the shooting phase. Uh, until the end of that phase, the arm penetration characteristic of long shot pulse rifles in that unit uh, is improved by one. Uh, in addition, until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack me with a long shot pulse rifle, uh, for units in half range, you, our protection is improved by one further, so it's minus two in half range. One CP for Wisdom of the Many, uh, use this in the movement phase, like an ethereal unit in your army, until the end of that phase, you, you can invoke one additional elemental power, uh, so long as the elemental power has not already been invoked that turn, that phase. And then a Pulse Onslaught for one CP, use this charge in your shooting phase when a breacher team from your army is chosen to shoot with, until the end of the phase, the range characteristic of the close range and medium range is increased to 15 inches. Uh, modulated weaponry, it's one CP as well. Use a stratagem in your shooting phase when a set model other than a titanic one from your army is chosen to shoot with. In the end of the phase, do not roll to determine the number of um, heavy weapon shots, it's just always max. So for one CP, your guns go to max for, for shots. That's pretty cool. Uh, Reign of Fire, not starring Matthew McConaughey, starring Despot Stingwings instead. <laughs> uh, when a Despot Stingwing uh, unit from your army is chosen to shoot with until the end of the phase, um, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model in that unit. If that unit was set up on the battlefield using the plunge from the sky that turn, you can reroll the hit roll. So when they come from the sky, they get to reroll hits. It's kind of cool. Two CBs for coordinated engagement. Use a strategy in the shooting phase. Select one XV8 crisis battle suit or XV8 crisis bodyguards unit from your army and select one enemy unit. Tell the end of that phase when resolving an attack made the model with the XV8 crisis battle suits or XV8 crisis bodyguards unit. Against that enemy unit, treat the enemy as having five marker light counters. Just bazam! You get all the marker lights. Once you be for ambushing predators, use a strategy in the shooting opponent's charge phase, like to create an infantry army until the end of that phase. That unit can perform a heroic intervention like it was a character. Um, if they do, they move three instead of six. Sorry, six instead of three. There. Backwards. Season Sniper for one CP. Uh, use the strategy in the shooting phase, select one far sight marksman model for your army. Or sorry, fire sight marksman, not far sight. To the end of the phase, uh, range weapons that models are equipped with that can target a character, even not the closest unit. Kind of cool. One CP for Hidden Hunters, use a stratagem at the start of your opponent's shooting phase, select a Crete unit from your army, uh, to the end of the phase, when resolving attack, may the ranged weapon against the unit. While it's receiving the benefit of cover, it's minus one to hit and add one to the saving throw. Pack Alpha, against Crete Shapers, um, it's before the battle. You tell the end of the battle, when making an advanced roll or charge roll for a friendly Crete within six, uh, you can roll additional d6 and discard one of the dice, so you get two pick the highest. Once you be for Ranging Beast, use a strategy when a Crudox Rider unit from your army is chosen to fight in the fight phase. To the end of the phase, they have an AP characteristic of 4 <laughs> in addition. To the end of the phase, the AP characteristic of Crudox Fist Models not unit equipped are improved by 2. That's amazing. So they said attacks of 4 and AP 2. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I got that backwards. Their attacks become 2 and they become eight, or 4 and they become AP 2. So the Crudox just freaks out and starts fighting really, 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 really badly. Um, point Blank Volley for 1 CP. Use a strategy from the start of your shooting phase, select a sub unit from your army until the end of the phase. Pulse blasters, pulse carbines, and pulse rifle models in the unit uh, have pistol too. In addition, until the end of the phase, models in the unit cannot be affected by the volley fire ability. So no volley fire, but for a CP, when you're in melee, you can just light people up with your guns. And then one CP for promising pupil. Use a strategy before the battle, after nominating your warlord, select a sub uh, character model from your army that does not have a warlord trait, and give them one. But you gotta have a unique one. Then the eight, ba 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 ba. There, are. here's the enclaves. It's Farsight and his Farsight Bros. Brave Storm, Shaz Vast with Shaz Vastos, <laughs> Bright Sword, Arakon, Shazve Oblotai 90, uh, Sub Commander Torch Star, and Ovesa, who's not even a fire warrior. He's just one of them, one of them engineer types. Uh, yeah, there's, they get all the stuff. <laughs> Uh, basically, they're like a, they're a super heavy auxiliary detachment. That's what they are, yeah. Uh, if you do the command points for that detachment, are changed to minus three command points, and you cannot give any model in your army a signature system. So if you take these guys, nothing in signature system, um, 
and they're always going to be equipped with exactly what they have. Yeah, whatever your various signature systems are instead. And there are 1,120 points for 8 characters and 14 drones. I mean, they're pretty cool. <laughs> I'm not going to go through them in detail. They are what they are. Farsight's a, everything on 2s. Strength 5 donuts, 5, 6 wounds. 4 plus save, 3 plus invulnerable. They have a laundry list of special abilities. I like that Oblate 9 is no longer flesh and blood. <laughs> Saves minus 1 from damage because he's just a robot now. Uh, and doesn't suffer from moonfire for heavy weapons. It would be a very cool modeling project. Like, it would be fun to make. It's not a whole army, so like you still need to have like a battalion of guys to go with them um, and kind of follow them around. But like it would su it'd be super fun to play. You know what I mean? Like it's just you and your, your robot bros and then like whatever the kind of Ronin uh, fire warriors you drag with you to <laughs> make sure you have some command points. <laughs> you just start with zero basically. So because they're minus three, you'd get you'd like get your battalion bonus basically. You'd five if you took a battalion of uh, just regular regular Joe blows. And they get their own stratagems though. Um, so they all get aggressive footing, resolving attack with a range weapon by this model uh, against the unit within 12. That treat that unit as being having an additional marker light counter. Uh, if you're playing with the Battle Forge Army, you can include no more than two Farsight Enclave Commanders in each attachment. And then your veteran cadres. So for one slash two CPs for the Farclight Enclave, this is basically when you're playing with the eight, you can take this as your, your allegiance. Um, use a strategy before the battle, select one XV-8 Crisis Battle Suits or XV-8 Crisis Bodyguard unit from your army that contains three models or for, for one command point or um, two models for two command points. So up to four models for two command points. Um, they get a three plus BS and you only use it once. So you get your list skill increased by one, which is kind of neat. And you get Furious Assault, uh, use charge in your charge phase, when a jetpack unit from your army finishes a charge move for each model in that unit, you can select one or more uh, enemy units within one of that model, roll a d6 and a 3+, plus, take a mortal wound. Danger Close for 1 CP, use a strategy in the shooting phase when a breacher team or strike team unit from your army is chosen to shoot. Till the end of that phase and resolving attack against a model in an enemy unit within 12, you can reroll the wound roll. Defense in numbers for two CPs. Uh, use strategy in the fight phase or your opponent's shooting phase when an XV-8 crisis battle seat unit or XV-8 crisis bodyguard unit from your army is chosen to be the target of attack. Uh, until the end of that phase, when you lose a wound on a 5+, plus, you shrug it. And you get a Focus Fury for one CP. Use strategy in your shooting phase when a character model from the army is chosen to shoot with. Until the end of that phase, when you resolve attack with that model, you can reroll the wound roll. And then Firestorm. Use a strategy at the end of your movement phase. Uh, set up three Tau Empire units uh, with the Flyer Battlefield roll from your army. The strategy costs one, so let's say select up to three. Um, this uh, costs one additional command point for each unit that you select. Roll a d6 for each enemy unit, and within three of the selected units, on a four plus, take d3 mortal wounds. You drop bombs! And then your Enclave Relics and Warlord Traits. Uh, if you're doing a Far Slight Enclave, you get your bonus relics, the Mirror Codex. Resolving attack made with the model uh, with this relic, you can uh, that's within against the unit within 18, you can reroll the hit roll. So anyone within 18, just like get to shoot him better. Uh, Talisman of the Arthas Moloch. Model of this relic is a five balls involved. Model of this relic can attempt to resist the psych power. Now within 24. Seismic fibrillator node. Now uh, once per battle at the start of your opponent's turn, you can choose to activate this relic. If you do so until the end of that turn. When a model starts or ends a move within six inches of the model with this relic, roll a die on a one, and they take a mortal wound. And then you get some sweet warlord traits. The first one is blooded through war. When a morale test is taken for a friendly farsight enclaves unit with the bonding knife ritual, uh, while within 12 inches of this warlord on a four plus, it's, uh, sorry, it's automatically passed on a roll of a four plus instead of a six. Aggressive tactician, uh, commander model only. When this Ma Warlord declares Mon Ka, it affects friendly Farsight units within 12, uh, sorry, Farsight Enclave units within 12 rather than within 6. And Master of the Killing Blow. When resolving an attack made with a Warlord by this Warlord against a character unit, you can reroll the hit roll. Good at killing knights, because a lot of them end up being characters. And then you get attack objectives. And we're on to the Militarum, so we're going to save that for another video. Uh, and yeah, jump, jump down to that afterwards. But there's your new Tau stuff. A uh, quick look at the beginning of the book and some of the MacGuffins that lead us to talking about these armies. But... Cool update for them. Some neat new stuff. I mean, this tap. You didn't get any new units except for Shadow Sun, who kind of already existed. So you got like an upgrade and a new model and stuff, which is cool. Uh, and yeah, you still you're still trying to save the galaxy from itself. So good on you. So we'll see you for the next video. Until then, Ash. Have a good night.
I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Desperate Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.